What is up, Navigation Traders? Happy Friday. Today is Friday, January 19th. Hope everybody had a good short week of trading. Monday was a holiday, so we got started on Tuesday. Before we jump into the alerts, one quick announcement. You should have received an email regarding a web class that we have next week with CML. So CML is the group that has created the Options Strategy Backtester. Uh, Ophir Gottlieb is the creator and he's going to be joining us on the web class. So super excited to have him involved and uh, make sure that you reserve your spot. Our, our, uh, our webinar platform holds about 200 people, I believe, 200 or 250. It's already starting to fill up, so make sure you lock down your seat here. Just go to navigationtrading.com forward slash CML dash registration. So like I said, you should have received an email and with a link to go to this page. In this web class, we're gonna be talking about when does momentum trading work, when does technical trading work, and when does non-directional option trading really work, which is a lot of the core strategies that we use. Also, uh, earnings announcements are starting to be released by, uh, by the different companies. So one of the biggest values of this strategy backtester is for earnings trades. And we do pre-earnings trades, uh, during the earnings announcement trades, and post-earning trades. So make sure you check that out. It's an extremely valuable tool. And again, super excited to have Ophir Gottlieb joining us to host the, uh, host the web class. So make sure you check that out if you're interested. And, and also, even if you already used the uh, CML trade machine, the, the strategy back tester, uh, Ophir is going to be talking about some of the new releases and upcoming stuff that they've got going on. So pretty cool stuff. A lot of exciting things happening there. Uh, let's jump into the alerts. So starting on Tuesday the 16th, and by the way, I, I'm going to break each week up by just saying new week here. Previously, we had posted our weekly video updates that you're watching uh, in the alert section, but we've got a new spot for them in the weekly video updates. So hopefully that's a little bit easier to find. I was having some members shoot us an email asking, asking where that video was. So first trade was in the QQQ. So we had an iron condor on in the Qs with this strong market going up. Price breached our upside break even, so we closed out the untested side. So now we've got three call verticals in the queues. So if we go to the Analyze tab on the platform, you can see we've got we've got three different ones. We've got the 163. Let me just uncheck these. We've got the 163, 166. We've got the 164, 167, and then we've got this one here, which I'm showing as a theoretical position. Uh, because I'm still migrating over all the alerts over to the new account, but this is the position that we've got on here. So all, all three of these together, I mean, they're, they're fairly close in distance and we just, we need some downside in the market. Uh, I sound like a little bit of a broken record here because the market just continues to grind higher, uh, but it's not going to do that forever. So just be patient, stay mechanical, keep short Delta in your portfolio, which is what we're doing. Next trade was in the ES. So we actually had two, two alerts back to back in the ES. So the first was our long put vertical. And this is one that we're holding for that short bias, for that short directional delta in our portfolio. And we simply rolled this from January to February. And we roll adjusted our strikes from the 2680, 2640 up to the 2830, 2790. And with, with futures, remember, uh, TOS does not allow you to do that roll in one transaction with options on futures yet. So we have to do that as two separate ones. So essentially we sold our January and we bought in, re-entered in February. So that's why that's sent out in, in two separate alerts. And then the next alert, very similar. The difference is this was a short call vertical instead of a long put vertical. Uh, but we simply rolled this from January to February and adjusted our strikes to the 2800 2830. So if we take a look on the platform, what that looks like, uh, here's the here's the here's the short call vertical. So you can see prices is, is just within a range here still. Again, just need some downside movement to benefit that. And then our long put vertical, which it looks very very similar. Uh, again, just looking for some down movement to benefit that piece. 
Next trade was uh, an opening adjusting trade in XLV. So we had on an iron condor, or we have on an iron condor in XLV, and price moved up, reached through our break even, and so we added another uh, XLV iron condor, and this one in the March cycle. So if we take a look at XLV, what you'll see is so this is the this is the initially we initial one that we had on. You can see price has breached our break even. And I had a couple of questions from members about well, why didn't we remove the untested side? Why didn't we close the untested side when it breached the break even? Well, the reason is, is if we uncheck the calls and we just look at the untested side, which is the puts, what you'll see is there's still a little bit of premium left in those options. So you can see the max, max profit on that side is 162. We're at about 135 now. So if price does continue higher in early next week, then we will go ahead and close that out because it's basically worthless at that point. Um, but for now, we're just gonna keep it on. And then we, and then the alert I just mentioned, the XLV iron condor that we just added right here, not much movement yet. So just waiting for some time decay and theta to decay in those options. Next trade was an opening trade in TLT. And this was more of a directional play. It did a couple things. One, I was looking for some downside movement in the price of TLT and the price of bonds, uh, which we have gotten. And then secondly, it also gives us a bit of long delta in our portfolio. So we always wanna keep that short bias, that short directional bias in our portfolio, but we're getting, we're, we're getting a little bit off balance, meaning we're getting a little bit too overweight to the short side. So this helped give us a little bit of long delta uh, typically when bonds go down, stocks go up. So this was short. Uh, this was a, 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 a bearish play, a short bearish play in TLT, uh, but gave us long delta when we beta weight it to our SPY portfolio. Hope that makes sense. I've, I've done some videos on beta weighting and, and deltas. So you have to go check that out. Check those out in our blog if you haven't seen those. But Look at TLT, uh, and you can see we've we've gotten we've gotten that down movement. So we got in up here, and the last couple of days TLT has really gone down. I want to I'm looking for price down a little bit below 123 to get out. That would book us a profit of about 50% of max profit, which is what I'm looking for. Uh, so we'll get some more theta decay next week, and if we get a little bit more down movement, we'll book that profit in TLT. Next trade was in DIA. So this was an opening adjusting trade. So we added an iron condor in DIA. So if we take a look at our graph here. So this is the one that we just added. This was the alert. So we just added this iron condor. You can see not much movement since then. So still just waiting on that. And then we've also got these two other positions on in DIA, which our uh, from previous iron condors, which are those short call spreads that we've rolled a couple times. So again, just waiting for a little bit of down movement in those before we uh, close or roll those again. And, and with those, those are in February. So we've got a decent amount of time left in February. We've still got 28 days, so a lot of time uh, for something to happen in DIA. Next trade was an opening trade in GLD. So IV percentile at the time got up to 56. So we entered a, an iron condor in GLD. We take a look here at the charts. You can see we've already gotten a little bit of contraction in IV since we put that on, uh, but just need more time to pass. And uh, uh, you can see we're still very, very centered on that. So. Not much has happened since we put that on in GLD, so we'll wait and keep you posted on that one. Next trade was a closing trade in Costco. So this is one that we put on uh, a while back, and this was actually a post earnings uh, short put vertical that we put on in Costco. So after Costco announced earnings right here back on uh, December 14th, uh, stock price popped up and typically when that happens, if it pops up above its expected move, it's typically going to grind sideways to higher. In this case, it dropped on us and then came back a little bit. Anyway, we held on, we held on and you know, if it, it got below that 185 or it was kind of finding support several times, I was going to cut it loose and cut our losses, but we did get a nice little pop up, nice little rally. We were able to book a profit of about $124 on that trade. So that was a good hold. 
Next trade was in SPX. Okay, so SPX was the one we had the calendar on. So let me walk you through this from the beginning and make sure you understand this because I did get some questions on this and rightfully, slow, uh, rightfully so because one of the uh, adjustment techniques that we used is not one that I taught in the course because we don't use it very often. It happened to make sense in this case, uh, but we just, we don't use it very often. So it wasn't even, it's not even in the course. So let me walk you through what we did. So SPX, we put on a, we put on an initial calendar, which was the, which was right here. So I, I, I put the, these have been taken off, but I put them on as theoretical just so I could show you what we did. So we initiated a 2705 put calendar back when price was trading down here around 2705. Okay, price came up, breached our upside break even, so we added a call calendar, and so we had a double calendar on. Now price continued to move higher and we were running out of time, so the first adjustment and the alert that I just showed was to remove the 2705, so we simply closed that out. So I'm gonna uncheck that, we close that out. A Couple of reasons, one, we're running out of time, and two, I just I wanted to reduce risk on this on this trade. So we took a loss on that 2705, and we we kept on the 2740 call calendar for a couple more days. So price didn't give us our, our down move that we were looking for. So the final adjustment that I made, uh, you know, so these are our, our uh, near term options were in on the January 19th expiration cycle, which is today they expire with the long dated options in January on the January 29th. So what we did is because we have some, you know, we have some space in between there to buy ourselves a little bit more time, we simply rolled that January 19 short call up to the January 24. So we essentially bought ourselves another week to potentially look for a little bit of down movement. And by doing that, we collected a credit, we reduced risk further in the trade and gave ourselves a little bit more time to be right. So if, if, if price moves down, we'll take it off and try to get out for a scratch or maybe a small profit on the trade overall. Or if it stays where it is or moves higher, uh, you know, we're, gonna, we're just gonna cut our losses and, and book a loss on this trade. So we'll see what happens next week. Uh, but, but if you are in this trade and you're looking at your analyze tab, you might be a little bit confused because you're seeing the profits up $4,500 and, and, and it looks a little goofy. But remember, toss doesn't take into the account the other trades that we already took off. So that's why it looks a little bit goofy. And so you got to manually do your calculations to figure out your, your total P&L once you're, once you're totally out of the trade. So we'll make sure to do that. But the bottom line is we're just we're looking for a little bit of a down movement in SPX to benefit that piece. And we've got another week. Uh, well, let, let me verify that. How many days do we have? We've got another, I think, yeah, five days. So early next week, uh, we'll, be, we'll be closing that out either for a loss or if, if we get a down movement for a winner. Next trade was an opening trade in the Euro for slash 6E. So I mentioned uh, that as an alternate trade, you could do a short strangler, iron condor, and 6E, or the uh, corresponding ETF, which is FXE. So if we take a look, the reason I did uh, forward slash 6E is just because I like to trade the futures because you get such a good bang for the buck. And if you look at this, we've got uh, you know total max profit on this of 925, and we're only using a little over a thousand dollars of buying power to put this trade on. So the that's where I say the you know the leverage, the bang for the buck with futures is just really good. Uh, if you don't have permission to trade futures or you're in an IRA, you could have put on a trade in FXE. Speaking of permissions, you know I know I know some of you have had issues with Thinkorswim giving you permissions to trade futures or uh, tier two or tier three permissions, and um, what I'm hearing from Tastyworks is that it they are people are getting approved much easier. So if you're not married to Thinkorswim uh, and, and, and you want to make sure you get the permission to trade those, those strategies and, and those permission levels, uh, Tastyworks is a good option as well. And I'm gonna be doing, so all of our training videos to this point have been on TOS. I am waiting for Tastyworks to come out with their, uh, their new analysis tab. It's going to be kind of like this, except from what I hear, much better. And once that's available, I'm going to be doing a, a ton of training videos on Tastyworks. 
for every strategy that we trade, how to roll, how to adjust, all the different things that I know you, a lot of you guys have questions on. I'm just waiting on them to, uh, to produce that, uh, to make that analysis tab available before I, before I start recording those videos. So stay tuned there. Next, uh, IBM. Okay, so this was another one that I wanna, I wanna talk about because this was, this was interesting. So IBM is a, a trade that we put on as a, a short straddle right after they announced earnings last time. So we've been rolling and adjusting and, and making the, the, the mechanical adjustments. And now they came up and they had earn, they announced earnings yesterday. So as a note, I mentioned, IBM announces earnings after the market closed today. If you do not want to take the risk of holding through earnings, then you should exit the trade. Uh, based on the credit I received though, I originally I had planned to, to close this out for a small loser uh, before earnings because I wasn't sure if I wanted to take the risk of earnings myself with this trade. But based on the credit that I got and kind of where the price was of IBM, I thought, you know, I mean, they're due for a little bit of a pullback. And uh, and, and with the credit that we received, it just made sense. So I did hold it through earnings. And so let's take a look. And, and, and then so the alert was right before the earnings announcement, we rolled our strangle and I rolled uh, I rolled the 160 puts up to 165. Uh, to add a little bit more protection to if the price moved higher, as well as collect some more credit. And then we and then we moved that uh, from January to February. Okay, so we the previous uh, spread was in January, so we just wanted to roll that out to February, cut down our deltas, cut down our risk a little bit right before the earnings announcement. So, what happened with earnings? Well, if you're in the trade, you probably know that. IBM, even though they came out with some some decent profits, uh, the stock dropped. Okay, which is what we wanted it, to, what we wanted it to do. So we got a nice downside move in the in the price, as well as the IV crush that's typical right after they announce earnings. And so here's where we stand now. So you can see it shows that we're up a little over five hundred dollars, but that's just on this piece here. But we, what we've got to do is we've got to take into consideration you know, all the roles and adjustments that we've made. So essentially what, what's happened is we've collected now, I, I totaled it up, we've, we've collected a total credit of $15.91. Okay, so, so that's the total credits that we received. So we've, we've added all those up. Now if we closed out the trade right now, what that's going to equate to is we would be able to close it out for about Little under 18, so we're still we're still down overall on the trade about 100 and 180 dollars. Okay, so what's so the decision now is we could go ahead and book this, uh, and I didn't book it because a I wanted to show you this on this on this video update, but b you know implied volatility is still pretty decent. I mean if we would have got a collapse under 20. You know, so there, so that the implied volatility was extremely low, I probably would just close this out and either take a small loss or, or we may have even gotten to be a winner if that was the case. But the fact is, IV percentile still 63, IV rank 44, so IV percentile still above 50. So I want to stay in this trade. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to hold this into next week and uh, you know, hopefully get a little bit more theta decay. If we get a little bit more downside movement, that'll help us even, even more. And then what I'll do is I'll, I'll eventually roll this trade from February to March. Okay, so, so February's got 28 days. March has 56, which is, again, right in our wheelhouse if we were to enter a new trade. So next week at some point, probably towards the end of the week, I'm going to roll this from February out to March, collect another credit, give us a little bit more time to make up make up some of that uh, some of that money and hopefully close it out for a winner. So that's that's the process with IBM. Next trade was oh, that that's the SPX one that I already went over. Those were sent out in a couple different alerts. And then next trade was in XLU. So we opened up an iron condor in XLU. So if we take a look here, you know, XLU has just been on a the utilities have been on a, a real slide. And, uh, and implied volatility has, has really spiked. So up near 100 on the, I think it was at 97 when we got into this trade. So with this one, you know, it's only a $50 symbol. So, so what we have to do is we have to, uh, we have to really tighten up 
our iron condor. So this is almost like a butterfly. You know, a butterfly would have a go all the way to the point at top. So we, it's a tiny bit wider than a butterfly, but it's tighter than an iron condor. And so when we when we manage these winners, we're going to book profits at kind of that 20, 25, 30 percent of max profit level, not wait for the full 40 or 50 percent of max profit like we do on a typical uh, wider iron condor. Last alert was today in soybeans where we bought back an iron condor Booked over 40% of max profit on that piece of the trade, uh, working our way back nicely in soybeans. So we still have on in soybeans, we've got this short put vertical, so need a little bit of movement up. Uh, early next week, you know, these options have 35, yeah, 35 days left in March. So we'll add another iron condor on in March, early next week. Hopefully we'll get a little bit of up movement in this February piece. And, and close out of that early next week as well, or sometime next week. The, uh, the and so those are all of our, our alerts. Let's go over some of the other positions that we haven't mentioned yet, starting with Natty Gas. So we've got this short call vertical, which was part of an iron condor, need some down movement there. This piece has just seven days left, so we'll be taking that off next week. And then we've also got a full iron condor on, in that gas, I'm showing this here as a theoretical position because it still hasn't moved over from the old account, but we do have this position on uh, up a little bit, not enough to take off yet. Uh, let's see, EWW we've got a position on. So EWW and FXI are pretty much in the same boat where price has, it breached through the short strike and breached through the break even. So I've gotten a couple uh, questions on this as to why have we not adjusted this yet? And you know, in the, in the course I teach that if it breaches the upside uh, or the, uh, the short strike or the break even, you know, that's kind of the trigger to adjust. And it is, that, that's the trigger. That's when we start looking at making the adjustment. But in this case, you know, if we look at just the untested side, which in this case are the puts, let me reset this so I can uncheck these boxes. So if we take a look at just the put side, you can see there's still some value in there. There's still $40 worth of premium. So we don't wanna make an adjustment unless it's absolutely necessary. And in this case, I would prefer to wait. And being in February, we've still got 28 days to expiration. Okay, so we still got a lot of time. So in this case, you know, if price continues to move higher, we will roll up the untested side and potentially put on you know, another another piece to this trade with implied volatility still this high, uh, but we will but we'll see what happens if it continues to move higher. If it moves back down into our range, we're not going to make any adjustments, and we'll you know hopefully book a profit on the on the trade as it is. Same thing with FXI, where prices continue to move higher, but implied volatility is up too. So if we take a look at the put side here, still got a decent amount of premium in there. So we don't we don't want to roll up those puts quite yet. Uh, so we're going to wait. If price continues higher, we will roll up that untested side, uh, but we're just going to wait for now. And then lastly, XRT. So we've got two different pieces to this trade. We've got a, we've got this strangle, which we have not adjusted yet. Price has just barely breached the, the short call to the upside. Uh, but again, same thing, still a decent amount of premium there. Uh, and then we've got this other, so we, if it continues higher, we'll, we'll adjust that next week. Uh, if not, we'll let it, let it roll. Uh, and then lastly, we've got a, a straddle, which was originally a strangle that's been adjusted. And same thing, price has moved up through the break even, but with implied volatility so high, uh, we haven't uh, needed to adjust that yet because there's still a, a decent amount of, of premium in those puts. So we'll just continue to wait. So that's it, everyone. Hope you have a great weekend. Look forward to a great week of trading. Hopefully we can get some volatility, maybe a little two-sided action, some down movement, and uh, make this a little bit more interesting instead of just this one-way direction. Have a good weekend. Talk to you soon.